Thank you for joining us. This is Help Your Own Way Podcast, and I'm your host, Mo Atkins. Welcome to another episode. Today, we'll be talking about how to talk to your kids if they struggle with weight. This is a very sensitive topic, so I'm glad to have Noha. She's a pediatrician practicing for over 25 years in Northern New Jersey. Now, before we start, anything else you want to add today? Hi, I'm Noha Polak. I'm a pediatrician, and I love to talk to kids and their parents about their body image and their, and their health journey. And I'm really passionate about teaching parents how to do this gently so that we don't have bad messages in our kids' heads for the rest of their lives. I appreciate you saying that because I think a lot of us, there are parents now, I'm not a parent, I'm not even going to pretend. That, and we've, we've learned from our past parents and, you know, and they learned from the past parents and they weren't taught how to just kindly tell you that you may need to eat better, right? And with the current society of how majority of kids are more obese and then with social media and all that stuff like that, there's a lot of body images, right? So I guess my first question to you is, how, do you, how does a parent even reach that conversation? I like to ask parents to please ask questions before they give advice. Okay. Ask your child first how they feel about their body. Do they like their body? Do you like how it looks, how it feels? Do you like how your body works? Are you out of breath? How's it feel? I like how you say that, but then um, we're looking at certain ages. I can understand between ages, like let's say six to like maybe 11. But then when you're talking about female, especially female when they hit 11 to like, you know, 18, I remember at 12, you wanted to, so I, for me, if someone asks me, how does your body feel like, it'd be very uncomfortable answering that because you're kind of shy and insecure. So how do you bridge for those women and even male at that age? I'm not going to talk because, you know, you know where I'm going from this. Please answer the question. I gotcha. Um, a lot of times you can ask, so what's going on at school with your friends? So what kind of messages are you getting from other people? Is there anything hurting or bothering you when you're at school? And sometimes parents don't even need to ask because they can tell what happens when their child is with other kids, what they're wearing. If your child refuses to go to the pool because they don't want to wear a bathing suit, then you know there's an issue. Um, and then you can start to address it. But figuring out what your child feels first is better than always just saying, hey, let's start to eat healthier. Um, just because always, if you enable them to make actions for themselves, they're much more likely to stick with it than if you kind of make them do it. And like when you said that, because I remember I always, I was, when I was younger, I was a chubby kid. I remember dad would be like, no more chips, <laughs> no more cookies and no more stuff like that. And I'd be automatic, automatically triggered saying, okay, you know what? I'm getting a little bigger. And when you said, you know, wearing those um, clothes, like with bathing suit, you didn't want to go out because people make fun of you. It is nerve wracking. And I never had that conversation. I, I, my dad never had that conversation. It was, you just need to, we need to stop eating chips. <laughs> it was just clicking that. I don't recommend you doing that to your kids. Okay. I am almost my forties. It just, it still sticks with you. And I think, okay, honestly, I know we talk about weight and health, but then body issue, like for those, especially men or women, like we, again, as a, we are bombarded with social media, you know, we're talking about then look like, how do you then tell your kid that they're, um, how do you help them understand that what they see on TV or social media is not a direct reflection of how real people look like? I think I want to start to answer that one, Mo, by saying that I am flawed just as much as every parent and every physician out there. I've made my share of mistakes and I'm still making some and learning from them. So my biggest lesson came from a patient who okay. is about 14. He's a male and I uh, was doing his general physical exam and I started to talk about his weight. And he stared me right in the eye and said, excuse me, I did not give you permission to speak about my weight. Boy, did that feel like a slap in the face. And I was like, okay, you got that. So first of all, please ask permission. Make sure it's the right time for them to discuss it before you open the subject. Whether you're a clinician or a parent, ask permission. First, find out how they feel about it. Ask their permission. If they feel respected, they will open up to you. If they feel disrespected, they may not. So learn from my mistake, ask permission. And then once they say, I am ready to have that conversation, then perhaps your next question should be, on a scale of one to 10, how motivated are you to make a change so that your body can start to be healthier? Please don't say so that you can lose weight because weight is just a number. 
It doesn't measure health. It doesn't, it doesn't measure wellness. It's a number that as clinicians we use to help us guide the, the patient one way or another, but it does not mean that much. So just as I'm on a scale of one to 10, how likely, I mean, how much do you really wanna change that? And if they say it's just a one, then say, so what's, why is it not a zero? If they say five, then you're like, oh, that's awesome. Let's move on. What change do you wanna make? And then you can start by making one change. A parent can suggest a change, but I would recommend that child suggest a change. You can say to them, okay, what change do you think would help you to feel healthier? And if they say, I'm gonna go for a walk every day, there it is. If they say, I don't know, ma, then you can give them a suggestion, but just one. Don't say something vague, like stop eating junk food because that's way too vague. Fair enough, I like that. I'm gonna switch it on you, okay? Go for I'm gonna it. Switch it on you. So I think for many, for many people over the time, we see kids are sometimes a direct reflection of their parents' eating habits. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. This is where I'm gonna go. And I find not fine. It's not even fine. I see, and I'm gonna be maybe I'm being slightly ignorant, and I'm okay with that because this is where you're gonna re-educate me. Okay. But if, and, but it's when you see parents are slightly maybe a bit, and their kids are the same as well, I, and they don't want to change a habit. And they're if your child is let's say 12 years old and they're like close to 200 pounds, at what point does that become child abuse? Oh, you know what? That's a really, really rough topic. I'm I not know. I'm going to tell you wrong. You directly, but, <laughs> you, but I can tell you. I can tell you I don't know any parent who's not concerned about their child's health. Fair, okay. If you come at it from the point of, let's check and see if your child is pre-diabetic. Okay. Let's, child, let's check your child's blood pressure. And if there is a pre-diabetes diagnosis, or if there's high blood pressure, which is hypertension that can over years ruin their kidneys, then you want to talk to the parent about, can I help? Do you give me permission okay. to help your child to avoid diabetes or to avoid kidney damage for high, from high blood pressure? Then once you have that permission, then you can move forward. Your job, my job, and all of our jobs in the community is to just help people that want help, but we cannot force ourselves on people. The great majority of parents want their kids to be happy and healthy though. I like when you said uh, permission, you keep saying that a lot and, and you know, old school mentality is like, why do I need permission from, I don't need to get permission from my kids. They're my child. They need to do what I tell them to do. You don't, I remember those days you go, you don't ask why you just do. There's no question. If I tell you to do something, you do something. So why, why do you believe, or why is there a change and shift of asking a child permission now that at one point we didn't, a child wasn't considered that they had the right to have a permission to do something or even say something? In 25 years of practicing medicine, I've learned that if you irritate someone by telling them what to do, you become controlling and they don't always cooperate. If you agitate them, which means kind of tell them, hey, do you want to change? Do you want help changing? Then you're much more likely to be successful. This is just a mindset shift. It's nothing more than that. And I respect every one of my patients as well as their parents. And I, I think the parents who respect their children get respect right back. Okay. Okay. I see that. And the parents who force their children sometimes can get a lot of lip service. Mm. Mm. I can see that too. Because at that point, if you're not respecting me, why do I have to respect you? But then there's old mentality that I'm your, your, I'm your mother. I brought you in or I'm your father. I brought you, you have to respect me. So I'm sorry. I come from old school. So I'm trying to break that thought process of what I went through as a child. So, 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 so one more time, kind of, um, okay. I guess, mindset shift is our children come through us, not, not from, from us. us. Okay. My children have their own personality. They certainly make their own decisions. Yes, you are real when you said that. Now adults, <laughs> and 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 um, you know, now that they're adults, they make their own decisions, and they didn't learn that suddenly at the age of twenty-one. Okay. Right? People, kids whom we respect, they actually become a lot more um, not only respectful but competent to make some decisions, good ones. 
I get. I think I understand what you're saying now. I'm not, to be more clear, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Is basically when you're raising a child, you know, at that point, you're right. They're not from. They're through you. So you have to raise competent kids. You have to trust them. You have to give them that kind of skill set. And if you give them that kind of level of respect, when they're out there in the world, they're gonna um, expect people to communicate with them like that. If they're not, they can put move themselves away from that and create boundaries from people like that don't trust them or don't respect them. Is that fair to say? Perfect. See, I Could have not I said it better. I learned. You see, this is why I do this. I learned. And for people like me to change my mind, um, uh, I, you know what? It's, it's nice to see that because I do see my sibling when, when she does talk to her, my sister, when she talks to her daughter or my, my sister, when she talks to her son, like you can tell that it's more of a communicative sort of authority. And, you know, you're right. Like, if anybody's watching and listening, like if they were interested in learning more how to, you know, bridge that gap or converse, what's the best platform to reach you out of just to learn those type of methods? Um, so my, my goal is to speak as much as possible about this topic. I really want parents to learn how to talk to their kids about their weight because my parents' voices are in my head up until now. And it's been a long time, let me tell you. So if we change the voice in our own children's heads so that their body image is one that's positive instead of negative, so that if they look in the mirror and they don't see that perfect body that they think of people like Lizzo and Oprah, instead of thinking, you know, I am not successful or I am not smart, then we have made a huge difference in the world. So if you want, would like me to be a speaker, either on your podcast or in your event, reach out to me at LinkedIn. I am at Progressive Pediatrics. Um, and I also have a website, progressivepediatrics.com. I'd love to be a speaker and I'd love to just magnify that message so that our kids have a much better body image than they have now. I honestly, I am gonna have that in the show notes in here too, but you saying that, you know, you have to start them young because I know a lot of people in my age group and above that I do have are traumatized. I do have issues with their body. And if you teach them proper communication, how to heal or even have that conversation about what your, a healthy body is, looks like at the age of like 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, it transitions up into their 40s and 50s and then keeps, and you're basically creating a healthy next generation. Is that fair to say? It's so fair to say. And if I could just give one message for parents to have reverberate in their own heads over and over again, is that a weight struggle does not mean you're not a strong person. It does not mean you're a flawed person. It means you're a person with an issue and it's a struggle that you need help with. And you should reach out to the right people to help you. It does not mean you're flawed in any way. So all of us, myself included, who struggle with their weight, are not flawed individuals, but normal individuals with a struggle. So, so Fana, can we say anything else after that? After that, no. thank you very much. I'm not going to add anything else to that. That was beautiful. Anybody else needs to hear that? I'll be quiet. Thank you very much. I really sincerely appreciate this conversation because I feel like a lot of people that are struggling now should have had that conversation correctly with their own parents when they were younger. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. We're glad to have you join us. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, share with anyone that needs to be empowered and inspired. And don't forget to join us next week for the next episode of Health Young Way Podcast. Have a good day, you guys.